So we've got a problem on Project Country Club. What else is new? But we're going to have to hack the CAN bus to figure it out, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and hopefully everybody's staying safe and healthy out there in this coronavirus scare. I'm using this opportunity to get some things done on Project Country Club and uh, get some things ready for the Super Auto, including the installation of an F1A supercharger on there very soon, so stick around. If you have not subscribed already, click that button. We're gonna be doing a lot of tuning content with that supercharger. We will be diving into uh, just the basics, going through the steps of math, speed, density, all that stuff. And then we'll be putting a snow performance stage four boost cooler on this thing. And it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. But for now, we need to fix a problem on Project Country Club. And I had a sneaking suspicion this is going to creep up to haunt me. Because whenever you get this modified, and this car is probably one of the most modified uh, XLRs out there, if not the most, because we're standalone ECU, standalone TCU, digital dash, all that stuff. Getting everything to work together is the hardest part. So the problem that I have is whenever the car is running, the trunk won't open. And that doesn't sound like a big problem. You turn the car off, you hit the button, the trunk opens, right? Well, that ties into another problem. The top will not go down at all right now because it does not know that the car is in park. So I did a little digging in the diagrams and found that there was a signal wire that goes into the ECU straight from the uh, transmission itself that said whenever it was it's basically the park neutral switch. That actually goes back and solves the issue that I had where this thing would not shut off the ignition relay. Wish I would have found that one out easier. I reverse engineered everything and basically took the command from the push button switch by hacking the CAN network and triggered a relay that would disconnect that thing. I now have this thing set up where the aftermarket TCU uh, will actually show what gear that I'm in. So I brought that into the digital dash. I've already set up uh, the tap shift so I can manually shift through the gears. And with this TCU, it has true manual mode. So you can bounce this thing off the rev limiter all you want. Take off fourth gear. This thing will not downshift, upshift, any of that stuff. That was on a different CAM bus that then had to be brought in and is transitioned into digital outs into the digital dash so I can see one through five. I did not bring in park reverse or neutral. I'm not worried about whenever I'm just normally driving. I just want to be able to see the gears when I'm manually shifting. But the same logic that was in there uh, to co uh, command those digital outs, I used to command another digital out whenever it's in park and send that to the ECM. Now the relay disconnects properly on that side of things. But it did not fix our issue with being able to open the trunk or lower the top. And the reasoning behind that is, is that the TCM itself sent a message to the BCM on the CAN bus the BCM then takes that message, converts it over to the class two serial, which is the single wire low speed serial bus and sends it to things like the folding top module. Therein lies the issue. We don't have the TCM anymore. So how do we decipher what that signal is? We're going to dive into that right now. Let's go over to my test bits, ignore the mess because it is a very big mess right now. I am in the middle of so many different things, but let's dive into it and I'll show you exactly what I had to do to figure this out get everything kind of pulled up here we've got the old test harness set up here but instead of running it into an ecm we've got it tied into the tcm i'm using the cut harness from that to apply power to the there's three points that needed power and they're just kind of half-ass shorted in there and then ground and then over here i have my uh can bus which is going to my microchip CAN bus analyzer. I'll put a link down below. And I've also got my HP Tuners MPVI2 plugged in, and I'll show you why. Uh, if we go ahead and bring this up and start scanning, you can see we're getting data in already. This is data directly from the TCM. This is what is considered the broadcast data. And the mentality behind this is that one of these three IDs is probably the IDs that the uh, BCM is looking for to verify what state the transmission is in. Doesn't tell us much information, but if we come over with our scanner, which luckily will still connect this way just to the TCM, and we uh, start scanning this thing and recording, you'll notice I'm logging transcurrent gear and PRNDL status. Uh, the PRNDL status is gonna be the important one because the way this ends up working is uh, the solenoids are the shift commands. If we come in here, I've got the, uh, 
the uh, pin out for the connector pulled up here. If we go down here and look, these transmission range signals are what come from the uh, gear shifter in the car. And you've got A, B, C, and P. Well, what you then have to do is go out and look into the documentation for this transmission and see uh, what goes uh, where, which is on, which is off, and in this case, on is being to ground uh, in order to command a different gear. Let me go back here. All this information is on pg4car.com, by the way. So if you wanted to come in here and look at some of this stuff yourself, you could. But if we go back into, uh, and this is just for the XLR, mind you. If we go back all the way, come on, where's automatic transmission, introduction. We can scroll through, down through this data and find what our commanded gear should be for park. So in park, or reverse neutral, we're going to be off, on, off, basically. Uh, that seems backwards. Oh, here we go. Here's the gear selector logic. So the big thing is A and P need to be low to ground. B and C are automatically high in this situation. As I said, we're switching to ground. So if we know A and P, in fact, I've got those two wires separated off right here, which are the white and the tan white. Uh, those two go to ground. The other two right here are uh, B and C. They're separated and it would go drive five. I don't know if that'll necessarily work, but we can try putting this to drive five and see what will happen. Yep, there it goes. So now we can see that PRNDL is in drive five. If we short these two to ground, we are now in park. That's what we're looking for is being able to command park on the PRNDL status. So if we come back to our CAN bus analyzer, we don't care about this information down here. This information is for HP tuners. That is HP tuners asking for the uh, status and getting the data back. We are looking at these top four up here. And one thing that we can discern right away is anything that is actively moving is not gonna be it. So this 150 uh, is probably a uh, watchdog of some sort or a communications monitor. 151 is suspect because it's all zeroed out. You should have some kind of data in there regardless. But we will watch 151 real quick and let's put it in park. So we put it in park, nothing happens. We'll watch 520, put it in park. Nothing happens. Now let's watch 320, put it in park. Okay, we've got stuff changing on 320. If you see data four is going from zero zero to zero A. So it's a good indication that this is our status indicator. I'm having a hard time holding this and watching the screen. So this is the message that we're gonna to wanna to replicate here. 002A, A3, 00, 0A, C100. So I've taken a screenshot of that that should line up. 4002A, A3, 00, 0A, C100. Right down in this row right here. So what we wanna do now is we wanna take our analyzer over to the car, plug it into the OBD2 port, and we're going to replicate this message and see if it allows us to open the trunk. Okay, here's the big thing that we want to take notice of. The car is in off right now. If we go ahead and hit the trunk button, up she goes. We'll shut her down. We're going to turn the car on now, just into on, engine off. And you can see now we're getting tons of data. Let me go ahead and clear out the data that we had on here. And this is just what's talking on the CAN bus network right now. Uh, but if I hit the trunk button, nothing happens because the car doesn't think as far as the modules that control the trunk and the roof does not think that we're in park right now. So I've got this message set up here as it was. On the scan, if we go back and look at the photo, it's going to match up 320-002A, A3-000A, C100. So what we can do is we can start sending this command, and it's going to send it every uh, half second or so. But now our trunk, well, should open. It tried. There we go. <laughs> so the command is falling off so fast that it thinks that it's going into uh, out of out of park, so it can't open quick enough. 
we'll solve that. I don't think that I can really slow my period down any slower on this one to blast this system out. Yeah, 100 is the minimum. And honestly, this should be the only device commanding that, so it shouldn't be giving us any issues. Okay, if you've done any bit of PLC programming, you know seldom does a logic work right the first time. Uh, but let me go ahead and go over what I've got going on here. And just to kind of prove to you that it's working, I'm not gonna plug into the OBD2. We're gonna write this logic to the Candy 7. I had to go in and make some changes real quick. It took me about 10 minutes. But what we had to do was, since we were already commanding a CAN message for uh, pulling a different device on here, I had to add basically a step-through counter that ties into what is called the switch logic. And so whenever we're at zero, we're commanding a uh, request to send with this address and then the top message on all these. Then whenever it counts as a one, we then switch to the other uh, CAN ID and then we are sending the other message. Just pay attention if you use something like this, the fact that your bytes are flipped on the output. So you have to make sure it's easier in hex, but to swap what would be data zero and data one around to make sure they're in the right order when it goes out. Then whenever uh, this counts up to two, it starts over. May or may not work. We're gonna go ahead, plug it in, load this in real quick and try it, see what happens. Hopefully it will work. So connect up, write our diagram, see if we get any errors. Well, that's a good start. I didn't get any errors on my program. And then we'll just go ahead and disconnect. Program should be in there now. Let's start up the car. Now that the car is running, here's the moment of truth. We'll see if the trunk opens. Bingo. Eh. It's getting caught up because I've got a power cable stuck through the back of the trunk. It's definitely not happy with me right now. The voltage is also very low. I need to hook up my better battery charger. But that's the good test. I'm going to run the car for a bit. We're going to fire it up and see if we can get the top down or not. Here goes nothing. So, as you can see, the top is finally working, and I'm not too afraid to admit that I cheated, and I'll tell you why. So I spent about, oh, I don't know how many hours trying to get this thing to work, only to find out that no matter what I did, the logic just was not working. I could get it to work for a couple seconds, and then it would stop, and it would fail, and I would have to try over again. And so I tried every combination of every code that I sniffed from the TCM uh, with no avail. And in fact, it was causing some other issues with some of the CAN bus sniffing commands that I was doing. So I thought maybe I should just try the TCM. So literally, I moved my test setup over here, stuck it in the floorboard of the car, plugged it into the OBD2 port, everything worked. And I thought to myself, well, that was simple. Why wouldn't I just put this thing in as a dummy? So literally, I took the test setup, put it in the back hatch in the cubby hole where the TCM, the, the aftermarket TCM is, and just wired power ground with the, the uh, solenoid set to park like I showed you on the bench, and then brought that over and tied it into the existing CAM bus, and lo and behold, we have convertible mode again. So. Uh, Hopefully you gleaned some information out of this and then you can also see at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to get creative on how to solve a problem. I could probably still sit here, sniff out what's going on from the TCM, try and figure out how to replicate that. But honestly, at the end of the day, for no more than that thing weighs, it's just easier to throw it in, that, in the uh, little storage cubby and be done with it. So listen, it's gorgeous outside, it's like 70 degrees, so I'm gonna go take a spin with the top down. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.